Hello. Uh, the second sharing is from Mesh, who's uh, from uh, who's uh, the customer success specialist at Amodeus. Hi, bro. Hello. Hello. How's your days? All good, thanks. And you? Yeah. Mesh, will you present how to organize the hackathon? Yeah, we all know that there are always lots of hackathon events nowadays in these few years, but how to organize it is is quite interesting. To Topic for us. Sure. So let me start. Okay. Thanks. Did you know that a recent study found that 80% of Fortune 100 companies use hackathons to foster innovation? And more than half of those companies that held a hackathon organized other ones, suggesting that they are now becoming recurring events. Take Facebook, for example. Features like the like button, the video upload, and even the timeline were all developed inside internal hackathons. Hackathons can help companies develop new features and save on R&D costs, but they can also be a great way to gather feedback and test your products. A cool example is Tesla. They recently offered a Model 3 car, as well as a cash prize to anyone that could hack into one of the automaker's cars. Hackathons are also a great way at creating a sense of community around your technology, as we now see many organizations starting their own hackathon series. Popular platforms like DevPost or HackerFer organize hackathons all the time that can attract thousands of participants. And of course, this is also a great way to promote your company as there can be a lot of buzz around a hackathon if done properly. Hey everyone, my name is uh, Matt Pinkovai. I work in the developers relations team of the Amadeus for Developers program. And uh, three years ago, we launched our API uh, program where we offer travel related APIs to any developers around the world. And during this time, we have organized and been involved in more than 15 hackathons to help us improve our APIs on our overall developer experience. And in this talk, I want to share with you all the key elements that you will need to consider uh, in order to organize a hackathon that really stands out. So I will take you through the checklist that our team always goes through each time we organize such an event, covering what you need to do before, during, and after the hackathon. So let's start. Before the event, one of the most important things you need to do, like for any big project, is to first define some clear objectives. This will build the foundation for everything else. It may seem obvious, but we've seen many people organize hackathons without a clear purpose. And when questions on their goals, they were unable to provide a clear answer. Without an objectives, you will be unable to provide participants with clear directions, and you run the risks of making the planning process a lot more difficult. So always ask yourself, why do you want to organize a hackathon in the first place? And what do you want to achieve? Is it to find new business solutions, to test your technology, for recruitment purposes, or even to reach out to the external community? Once you've agreed on an objective, the rest of the planning will flow more naturally. So after setting some objectives, you then need to decide on the format of your hackathon. Firstly, you need to decide if you want to organize an online or an in-person event. This depends again on what you want to achieve out of the hackathon. For example, if your goal is to test out your technology and gather as much feedback as possible, you should probably opt for an in-person hackathon as it will allow you to spend more time with the participants and really collect some more meaningful feedback. There's nothing better to collect feedback than to have a face-to-face -face discussion with someone that's just been using your technology for the past 48 hours, as you can really take the time to pick their brain and really understand where you can improve your APIs. On the other hand, if your goal is to discover new use cases that can be built with your APIs, an online hackathon over a longer period of time might be a better solution, as you will most likely have more complete solutions and potentially even more participants as well. So try to really define some clear objectives before anything else. After that, the question is whether you organize an internal or an external hackathon. In our case, we've done both in the past. So we organized some internal hackathons in the early days of our program, and it was actually a great way to learn how to organize such an event in a safe environment. If you have the uh, opportunity to do the same, I highly recommend it. Um, it's a great way to assess your technology readiness before launch. Working with internal developers, you can also spend more time with them after the event and collect as much feedback as possible. But of course, uh, we all know that if we stay in our own internal world for too long, we run the risk of confirmation bias. So for that, uh, in my opinion, external hackathons will always be better. Uh, in our case, for example, we want to simplify the travel industry as much as possible. So by having developers new to that industry build with our technology, we can really see where our typical users would struggle. Regarding the length of the event, this depends on what you want to achieve uh, and if you want good quality prototypes or not. The longer the hackathon, the more polished you will find the finished solutions. But I would recommend to make the hack at least 48 hours, 
as we found that anything less than that is a bit too short. As for the audience, having a mixed profile uh, in the teams is always a good idea, uh, but I would make sure that the teams are made up of mostly developers. Again, this depends on your objectives, but hackathons are technical events and the team should be able to build a finished prototype. And of course, you then need, need to decide if you want to make up the teams yourselves or allow the participants to join as teams. Uh, we've tried both in, in the past, and my recommendation here is to just decide on the maximum amount of people and let the teams create themselves. You can invite the people that are looking for teammates to simply get in touch with you, and then you can put them in, in contact with one another. I've also seen in the past organizers throwing networking events before uh, the hackathon, where participants can meet and create the teams. Both, I think, are a very good option. Once you've decided on your objectives, on your formats, uh, on your audience, you should also try to find some sponsors for the event. So for this, make sure you give yourself enough time to onboard the sponsors, as it can take a bit of time to get the legal and finance side of things in order. But sponsors can be extremely helpful. Not only it will help you with your budget, but depending on the type of uh, sponsor, it can help you recruit participants and even promote the event. To find the ideal partner, uh, I would recommend you focus on organizations with complementary technology that hackathon participants can combine with your APIs. For, the uh, for example, in the past, we had Microsoft sponsor one of our hackathons, and we asked the participants to basically build their solutions using our APIs on Microsoft as well, which worked very well. Uh, and then lastly, you also need to agree on a sponsorship package for your sponsors. So that can be negotiating, depending on the level of involvement they want to have in the hackathon. Will they provide their technology, define a challenge, or include a, a jury member to pick a winner? In case they want to have a more active role in the hack and provide the technology, you also need to make sure that you have access to all of their documentation and that the participants will receive support from them if needed. In addition to that, uh, you also need to think of all the logistics for the event. So firstly, the venue, if it is an in-person event, where are you going to host it? You need a big enough space to host all the participants, but also make sure that it has strong enough internet for everyone to connect, as well as enough access to power plugs. This is very important. If you've never used this venue before, make sure that you can host these type of events. If you have 100 people or more in the same room all trying to use the Wi-Fi at the same time, it needs to be strong enough. Uh, my next point is around catering, so I have no idea why, but a lot of people seem to think that it's not a proper hackathon without pizzas and junk food. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm always the first in line for a good pizza, but you don't want to live up that for just two days. So try to mix it up a bit, uh, and of course try to consider all the different dietary uh, restrictions. In addition to that, uh, try to dress the venue as well if you can. It doesn't have to be much, but we've seen uh, a lot of pictures in, of hackathons in grey basements that don't look very inviting. So you can try to include some banners, media boards, and, and things like that to really make the venue stand out. But something that's always good uh, is to also include some whiteboards to, uh, so teams can use them to brainstorm. They've always been in very high demand in our previous hackathons. Next item on our checklist is to, of course, define an agenda. Here, I recommend you make the kickoff on introduction speeches as short as possible to allow for more time coding. There's never enough hacking time on a hackathon, so don't waste any time. Furthermore, it's also crucial that you stick to schedule. Hackathons tend to finish late, so the last thing you want to do is to make it even later for your participants, as they will probably be very tired at this point. So make it run like clockwork to avoid any complications. This is especially important during the final pitches to the jury. In order to be fair to everyone, you need to give the participants the same amount of time for the pitch and for questions without letting anyone go for longer. It's not a bad idea to have someone during a hackathon responsible for, for timekeeping for, for these kinds of, of things. And of course, also be very transparent about your agenda, even before the event. So give the participants the opportunity to basically organize themselves around your agenda. It's not uncommon for team members to come in and out of the hackathon. So by having a clear agenda to follow, it just makes it easier for everyone. After that, it's also very important to establish a challenge on a clear criteria to win. Again, this will be driven mainly by your overall objectives, which will help you shape this challenge. Um, for example, before we even launched our Open API program, we organized a hackathon to test our, our API with external developers for the first time. And we created a small secondary challenge called the Bug Hunter, where we encouraged uh, developers to find issues with the APIs and report them to us. This actually worked very well, uh, and it's also fun to do. Instead of getting frustrated at bugs, participants would be uh, cheering each time they found one. And what's perhaps even more important than an interest, interesting challenge is to decide how you are going to objectively choose a winner. For this, I strongly recommend you agree in advance which specific areas the participants would be judged on. 
you should create a score sheet for your jury members to follow. In our case, we always ask the participants to at least build a working demo application, and then we grade the teams on three different areas, innovation, business value, and technical soundness. So each of the jury member will give a note on uh, each one of these areas, and that will help them compare the different projects to pick your winner. Also make sure that the participants are aware of this uh, so that they don't waste time and instead only focus on what is important. Next item on this checklist is uh, swag and prices. Again, this depends on the type of hackathon you want to organize. It's always nice to reward participants with something, but of course it's perhaps more relevant for external hackathons where it can be a bit more difficult to recruit participants. For the swag, you might have access to company merchandise that you can give out. Uh, but ideally, the better would be to design your own for the event. Typical things like uh, branded stickers, notebooks, or t-shirts are always a safe choice. When it comes to prices, this will help you find uh, participants. The better the price, the more people will want to participate. In our case, we've tried many different things, so prices related to the theme of the hackathon, cash prices, and even incubation with our company experts to launch your business. Uh, and I would say, um, in most cases, cash is king. So you can check on many platforms that are specialized in hackathons, and you will see that the most popular ones usually offer a cash price. Uh, and something else you need to, to consider with uh, uh, offering a physical price is what happens if a team wins with less member than anyone else, or if someone wins on their own. With a cash price, they will be more rewarded for their work. Uh, and of course, you can also leverage on sponsors. So ask them to create their own challenge on participating in the prices, as it will make the, the hackathon more appealing um and uh, it will also help you in terms of your budget uh, next you have to decide between your team who will be the jury members that will deliberate who is the final winner as well as the mentors that will support the participants for both here you should consider having a mixed profiles both technical experts as well as people with business knowledge using my uh, company as an exo example so we offer travel related apis that cover uh, many different travel segments like flights hotel rail cruise and many more so during a hackathon, we try to have at least a couple of our developer uh, advocates, so technical experts that can help the participants with the, uh, the API integration on technical questions, but also people with deeper knowledge of the travel industry that can help with the more difficult questions on the business, like uh, how do the commissions work or what are other similar companies in the sector doing. And for the judges, you should try to do something similar and cover all the different criteria you will be selecting a winner on. So for example, if the technical quality is very important to you, make sure that you have a member of the jury uh, with a technical profile that will be able to ask the participants questions on the API integrations and things like that. If your sponsor or partner has their own challenge, also uh, make sure that you invite them to nominate a, a jury member, especially if their technology is being used during the hackathon. And of course, you should also try to streamline the judgment process as much as possible. Uh, from experience, we found that the final pitches can take a lot of time which is tiring for everyone, but also a bit unfair if it takes too long, uh, as the teams going last will have a small advantage on everyone else. So if the hackathon has many teams participating, you should select the finalists beforehand and only let them pitch their ideas to the jury. For this, once everyone stops coding, your mentors can basically go from team to team to check the demo applications of each team and pick the finalists. So uh, now you're almost done, but not quite. A few final touches that you have to, to, to make sure you uh, get ready. So firstly, make sure that you don't have any planned maintenance the day of the hack or anything else that may disrupt your APIs. It's always a good idea to inform your technical teams in advance so everyone is aware of the situation. You also need to establish some clear points of contact in case of uh, an outage. It's a good idea to have someone on call that can help out in case of a major issue. This actually happened to us in one of our previous hackathons. Our uh, developer portal started to behave a bit strangely in the middle of the hack, and it was uh, a Saturday night, uh, but because we had someone ready for these potential problems, we managed to uh, solve it very fast. And of course, you should also do a bit of housekeeping in your documentation, so uh, always a good idea to make sure that everything is updated. I also recommend to create a cheat sheet with basically all your APIs, a simple description of uh, the API on, on their endpoints. We found that they've always been very popular during hackathons. And lastly, make sure that you confirm the attendance of the participants a few days before the hack is about to take place. Uh, this is very important. In the past, we actually used um, a third party company to help us find participants. And through a bit of mismanagement, we had more people turn up than anticipated for the event. So make sure that you really nail this on and confirm the attendance before the event. 
And now after COVID-19, you even might have to oblige to some uh, health restrictions, so very important. Now, uh, so during the EG event, since D-Day and Hackathon has started, what do you do? You will find that the first couple of hours in a hackathon can be very loud. Everyone is brainstorming and discussing ideas. This is generally where you'll be the most needed. So try to have a few people in the room that can offer support. Once the, uh, the room goes a bit quieter, usually that means that it's coding time and everyone's working on their, on their ideas. You might still be needed for this quiet phases, so don't go too far. But in parallel, it's also good practice to create a virtual chat for the hackathon. So people can ask for help on there if they want and send you their questions. As mentioned earlier, it's also extremely important that you stick to schedule. So make sure that you start on time and that you respect the agenda. If the introduction talks are uh, taking a bit too long, don't hesitate to cut them short and move forward with the hackathon. If the participants are missing some key information, they can always ask you for help if they need. And of course, no matter what your objectives are, you should always take this opportunity to gather as much feedback as possible. So now don't be very intrusive, but if you have the chance to ask the participants how they're getting on with the API integration, if they're having any difficulties or if they're missing any information, please do so. This feedback will be gold later on for your product teams. Now my next point might be a bit obvious as well, but don't forget to take notes. Hackathons can be very tiring for everyone and it's easy to forget things, especially if everyone hacks through the night and uh, you have to be there. You're not going to remember if at 4 a.m. in the morning, someone makes a comment on your API reference documentation. So please take notes. And to save on time, you should al also make some room in your agenda to pick the finalists that will pitch to the jury. Especially if you have many teams taking part, uh, letting everyone pitch can be a bit overwhelming. But if you spend some time talking to all the teams, you will have an idea of who managed to build a good working prototype on who will go through to the final. If you've set up some clear criteria from the beginning, uh, like previously mentioned, this should be easy. You can basically disregard all the teams that have not finished their prototypes or the teams that did not address the challenge. This is also why you need to be very clear on how you are going to pick the finalists on the winner. Unfortunately, I've seen in the past some very cool demo applications that never made it to the final pitches simply because the teams ignored the challenge, uh, which is really a shame. So don't leave room for interpretation when you're telling the participants how they can win. And of course, uh, prepare for the unexpected. No matter how much planning you, you do, you always run the risk to run into some small issues. From uh, This is speaking from experience, from a, a projector that stops working, an internet outage, or even running out of coffee. Um, so try to always be uh, flexible and prepare for, for anything to, to happen. And lastly, after the event. So if you want to make hackathons a recurring theme in your strategy, you should document your findings. This will help you justify any future hackathon you want to organize, as well as uh, show where the added value is. Uh, so the first things you, you need to do is to, what we do in our case, is to basically create a, a survey. We print it out and give it to each one of the teams before the award ceremony. On this survey, ask participants to basically rate uh, our APIs, the documentation, the portal, and the event organization. After that, we calculate a net promoter score for the event, and it basically allows us to track our performance over time and see where we can improve. On top of that, you should also do a team retrospective. So get everyone that participated uh, in your team to drop down their thoughts on the event. To streamline this process even further, we created a template that each one of us fills in after the hackathon, where you ask questions on the uh, organization, the API used, the applications created, and uh, any feedback created uh, collected from each one of uh, the teams, which is extremely useful. After the event, you should also look at the applications created in a little bit more depth uh, to find for potential opportunities. Perhaps there's some exceptional projects that you can help bring to life. In our case, we try to keep in touch with the best projects and see if we can help them move to production and even launch their app. And finally, uh, this is your opportunity to do a little bit of communication. A little bit of marketing never hurt anyone, so don't let that go to waste. Uh, it's your chance to make some noise in your in your channels. You can write blog articles summarizing the event and the applications created. Uh, and finally, don't forget to, of course, thank all the participants. Everyone gave their free time to be here, even during your weekend to take part in your hackathon. So don't forget to send an email uh, to thank everyone at the end. This is also a good opportunity to invite everyone to join your online communities or sign up for your newsletter to, to keep in touch for, for future news. As mentioned at the beginning, hackathons are a great way at creating a sense of community. So if participants really enjoy themselves, they will come back to your future events and even advocate for your technology. 
uh, that was it for me today. I hope you found it interesting and uh, that the information is useful to you in case you ever organize your own hackathon. If you want to keep up, uh, keep in touch with me, feel free to do so. You can contact us directly on Twitter uh, at Amadeus for dev I'd love to hear your thoughts and very happy to take any questions if you have any. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I joined a few hackathon events before. I don't have, but I don't have a chance to be a helper of the organizer. Mm -hmm. but nowadays, is there any challenge? when the hackathon events becomes virtual due to the COVID-19? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm a big fan of in-person events, as I mentioned. I just think it's so much uh, easier to make a connection with someone when you're in the same room and you can extract a lot more value. But uh, yeah, um, our virtual hackathons can be a challenge, but the, sometimes they have uh, they have the advantages. We, we only organize a few, uh, but it's true that you tend to get a lot more participants. And as I mentioned, just because usually the, the online hackathons take, uh, take place over a longer period of time, the teams really have a chance to, to nail their, uh, their working prototypes. So usually it's, it's more than a prototype, actually, to finish that uh, in those cases. So they have the advantages, I would say. Uh, we all know that more and more public, I can say, the public hackathons nowadays. Do you have any suggestion to the participants of the hackathons? Is there any, any important like important selection criteria that we need to be careful as participants you mean yeah participants um so i would say try to be original uh try to always think of the business value behind your app it's easy to create something very cool and that's that's nice but that doesn't have a true business uh, value behind it so if you really want to to win a hackathon I would say to really focus on that first. Uh, think of the, uh, the organizing company. What kind of pain points do you think they're facing and how would you be able to solve that? Okay, and the last question. Uh, if we are the organizer, uh, how to extract, I can say, extract your business value or the value in the tackle solution from the result of the hackathon? Is there any, any key skills or suggestion that you can share to us? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I understood the question. Yeah, because uh, let's say we the organizer, mm -hmm. of course, we, we will try to ex extract some business value ah, or the yeah. technical solution from the uh, the, uh, the, present, the mm -hmm. presentation or the demo. But is so there any key skills or suggestion that you can share? Yes. How to to extract it? Yeah, yeah uh, sorry, I can really understand now. So yeah, to uh, as the part, as the organizers to extract as much value as possible, I would say make sure you you define a really good challenge um, that doesn't allow for very generic applications. One of the biggest challenge we faced is having basically the same application created over and over and over in hackathons. So for that, I think the best solution is to try to think of a, a challenge that's very original, and that would basically uh, gear participants towards. Um, you know, a different kind of uh, uh, project that you wouldn't have necessarily thought about. Or, or combining it with uh, other sponsors on other technologies. So um, in the past, again, for example, we did something around blockchain, which was completely new to us. But because you have the uh, combination of travel and blockchain, you will see some combinations that you've never really saw before or thought about. Yeah, in my mind, the hackathon is a good event for us to to learn more about the, let's say the IT industry or the current new, uh, the the latest technology or the business where the, 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 the industry launch during the hackathon. Yeah, thanks for your time to for for your sharing about the hackathon. Uh, about in, no uh, problem. Thanks everyone. Yeah, as an organizer, I can say as an organizer because I have no knowledge about the organizer before you were sh your sharing before your sharing. Yeah, thanks. Highly recommended. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Nice to meet you. Bye.